So here's a type of a differential equation uh, that we've actually talked about in a different video, but we didn't write things out by hand, so maybe that has a different feel to it and we can focus on other things. So let's say someone's getting medicine in an intravenous drip at 100 milligrams per hour, and once the medicine is in their body, each little bit of it uh, decays, like the molecules get processed and turned into some other medicine or, or a less useful molecule at a proportional rate of 16% per hour. Uh, that's reasonable for some medicines. We're going to say f of t is the amount of medicine in the body at time t in milligrams, where t is measured in hours. But here's the thing, we don't have a formula for f of t, and we don't have data for it. We're going to have to find out the values of f of t as we go along. Uh, let's say we do know the initial value um, that at time zero, there's zero milligrams in the body. So this is time zero hours. So that's kind of when we start the intravenous drip. And the person doesn't have any medicine in their body at that particular time. Um, what can we say about how f of t changes? We know the growth, there's the, the rate we're adding, and that's a rate, so that's like f prime. And we also know that we lose some in a sense that's proportional to how much is in the body. So our differential equation is f prime of t, well, we're adding 100 milligrams per hour, and then we're losing 16%, or you could say 0 0.16, of whatever is in the body. How much is in the body? Well, we don't have a formula for it, but we have a name for it, and the name for it is f of t. So this is kind of crazy, right? We're saying f prime depends on what f currently is, but I don't know what f currently is. That feels very circular and kind of maybe not so reliable, but it actually is really reliable, and differential equations get used all the time in medicine and engineering and physics and chemistry. In chemistry, you often call it kinetics, um, biology, um, all kinds of places. Differential equations are really important. Um, so this is our differential equation, and together with knowing how much there was at the beginning, we can uh, then estimate how much there will be after a little bit of time and then another little bit of time, just like we just talked about for the floodwaters thing. So let's sketch out a spreadsheet. Let's have time in hours, 0, 0 0.1, 0 0.2, etc. No reason it has to be integer time steps. Uh, we'll have delta t, or you could call it dt. Uh, we'll have f of t, and we'll have f prime of t. Oh, another name for f prime would be like df over dt. We've used that notation before. Um, that's often just as common in differential equations work as saying f prime. So at time zero, we know we had zero milligrams in the body. What is f prime then? Well, I have to use the information I have. So I'd say it's 100 minus 0.16 times the current f of t, which is 0. So we'll just kind of draw an arrow to kind of trace where stuff is going. And what is 100 minus 0.16 times 0? It is 100, right? So then 1 tenth of an hour later, so we can say delta t here is 0.1, which we get by subtracting those two. How much medicine is in the body? Well, we'll use our calculus prediction equation and say the current value, or the, the, this value here, uses the previous value, so uh, whatever cell reference that is, plus the rate of change, which is 100, right now it's 100, times delta t. So those will all be cell references. And what we'll get is 100 plus, oh sorry, that was 0, that number is 0, plus 100 times 0.1, which is 10. 
So we'll have a 10 in this cell. Let's uh, divide that. And then what will I get in this cell? I'll just fill the formula down. So I'll get 100 minus 0.16 times whatever new amount I have in the body, which is 10. Remember, I wouldn't be typing a 10. I'd be typing a cell reference. And what is 100 minus 0 0.96 times 10, uh, 0 0.16 times 10, that's 1.6. Subtract from 100, you get 98.4. And then here, I take this previous value. So I had 10 plus this value, 98.4 times the new delta t. Here I'm using delta t or time steps that are all the same size, um, but you don't have to. It's perfectly fine to have slightly different time step values. Um, so here I've added almost another hundred, but not uh, not another ten, but not quite. So I think I'd end up with nineteen point eight four. So it's still increased, but not quite by ten. The rate of increase is slowing down, and then I just repeat that. Uh, we already made a video where we did basically that, and we saw that um, f prime uh, that that f went basically like this. Uh, so this was time in hours, and this was f in milligrams. And we asked, does it keep increasing forever? Does it level out somewhere? Does it go above something and then come back down? All kinds of interesting questions we can ask. So one last thing we can think about on this is diagramming uh, Euler's method, which is what we've been using here. Well, does this seem likely to give a circular reference warning in Excel? If one cell depends on the values of another cell whose values depend on that first cell, you'll get a circular reference warning because it doesn't know where to start. It looks like it might, but we're being very careful about going from f to f prime and then using that in the next row of f, using that value in the f prime on that row, then using that f prime in the next row for f, and etc. So it doesn't end up circular. What Euler's method or our method is doing here, we're saying starting out here, we know the slope of the tangent line. We know how fast things are changing. And we follow that out, whatever our delta t is. And then that's my prediction for the new value. And then I ask, what's the slope of the new tangent line? So I get a new tangent line, and I follow that out another delta t. And I get a new value there. And then I ask, what's the slope of the tangent line at my new point? And I follow that out another delta t, etc. Is this tracing the curve exactly? Well, not exactly, probably, because uh, behind the scenes it might be curving. So just because it had that slope here doesn't mean that it didn't like not quite keep up with that trend line or with that tangent line. And when I had it here, it might have curved and not quite kept up. So the shorter time steps you take, the less opportunity the real function has to curve away from the tangent line and the more accurate your results will be. So in general, we like to take short time steps if we can. Then you have to take a lot of them. And if it's a serious problem, your computation might slow down. Um, but in Excel um, and Calc 1, we're not too worried about that. So you can say shorter time steps gives uh, better accuracy. So Euler's method is basically just project the tangent line out a little bit, follow it, and then get a new tangent line, project that out, follow it, etc.